All right, we're back in the Book of Random Tales 2, playing as Nate here on the Pirate Island, and, uh... Yeah, I wonder if he should really drink this grog. I don't think oh, so. Oh, I'm cured of that. For now. A few old peanuts in a dirty bowl. A dinner for champions. He just took some peanuts. Take more peanuts. more won't do any harm. A few more won't do any harm. <laughs> All those peanuts. Okay. Fortunately, Critter's drink has ensured I got out of this without feeling sick and having a headache. But it's still going to be a while before I stick my nose in a book like that again. That's the guy who mixed me all the drinks. You should be ashamed of yourself giving a man what he wants like that. <laughs> we want to steal the oil lamp without being noticed, so we've got to get rid of that ape. The Red Pirates got loads of magical toys and an extremely unstable psyche. A dangerous combination. Yep, I'd say it is. The fight would be too loud and over quickly. I've seen a pirate ape sink a ship with his bare hands. We want to steal the... Alright, cool. So I have peanuts. He's incorruptible. And he's Red's right-hand man. And the barkeeper. I won't get anywhere with nuts. I wonder whether I can just... Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. All right. Hello. He's always needed the attention and admiration of others, even if we did make fun of him behind his back. Completely alone, stranded on a desert island, it can only end in tears. Okay, so what happens if Nate gives the... I don't even know what that gnome's called. I met him in a tavern in Bonzing and told him about the lamp. Has some good tricks up his sleeves. If he says he can open a crystal dome in a flash without making a sound, then I believe him. Oh, of course he's a gnome. And gnomes are engineers. I don't know what else there is to talk about. Me and Critter will take care of that darn ape. It's in the back. All right, cool. Um, so what happens if Nate gives the bird a peanut? Do you like peanuts? <coughs> Another peanut? Ah! Na, 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 na. Neener, neener. Okay, so it's just like we're critter. All right, cool. Another peanut. Ah! Na, 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 na. Yeah, you're so funny, Nate. So funny. Oh! So he has the bird. Now I can switch to Critter, and he can- Oh! Take the blanket, take the blanket. Ooh! Okay. Oh, the bird's back. Yep. <laughs> Suck to be you. I want to board the Mary. Looks sick. Oh, you can't? What? Once we've got the gin, the I wonder. Okay, he can just look at it, but Critter can actually, like, not really, but Excellent. almost board it. Interesting. <laughs> lulz, lulz. 
That strange bird seems to have quieted down. He's probably accepted defeat. Or fallen asleep. Fezzes are cool. Okay. Oh yeah, Nate was stuck in this cage actually in the first game. This is definitely the same ship. Okay, so what do I do with the Fez? Maybe Critter can do something with the Fez though. Nate, move it. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Nah, he's already got a fez, and this one would be too big for him anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, Critter? Get over here. If Critter has it, then maybe he can change the monkey's fez when we get a drink. Nate? Give the cool fez to Critter. Here, perhaps you can make use of this. Look cool. Yeah. Go, Critter, go! Hello. Boon <laughs> Salamari, please. Uh, this ape has so many fezzes right now. Swap the fez. Fezes? Fezies? Fezazies? <laughs> Whoopsie. Now all we have to do is get you out of there. That's my job. Right. How long will it take? In the meantime, I could... What were you saying? And that's why you should always have a reliable partner. It was nothing, really. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. Now let's get out of here. Nate is playing a very dangerous game. I'm gonna get presume. ready for the big show, critter. Oh, hello. Um, you're a, a new one. Ta-da! What? Aren't you supposed to put on a big show? Ta-da. Good grief. I, uh, always thought djinns were godlike super magicians with healthy egos. Oh, yeah. They're great. Uh, but aren't you a djinn, too? Oh, well, yes. That's true, of course. I mean, not that you aren't great. I, I just thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> My brothers are all bigger. They serve the most powerful rulers in the universe. Me? Uh, you know, they sent me here to practice. They said no one in this strange old world would really notice if I screwed things up. Because, <laughs> you know, this is screwed up already, so... No one knows if you screwed up no more. Yeah. Nate's the name, but you can call me Master Nate. What's yours? Benjamin bin Nabil Tafik bin Ekrem Kamal bin Abbas ibn Hadshi. Eh, I'll call you Benny. <laughs> As you're a djinn, you have to grant me three wishes, right? Um, of course. Yes, sure. But? But? It would be nice if... Well, can we agree on three small wishes? You mean, if I want my own kingdom with immeasurable riches, then it's only allowed to be a small kingdom? <laughs> yes, well, I could perhaps come up with a coin. A coin? I'm trying to impress an elf princess. Do you really think a coin is going to blow her away? I'm just not that good at magic. 
Not that good at magic? <sighs> Take ten breaths and count deeply. All in good time, Nate. All in good time. Oh, he wants to impress Ivo. He totally wants to impress Ivo. Let's start with something easy. Open that. Oh. Oh. It's not really that easy. Not that easy? Please don't pressure me. I don't like it when people get on my back. Concentrate and open it. That's my wish. <sighs> All right then. I did it! Did you see that? The padlock. You're supposed to open the padlock. But, but that's a magic padlock. I can't do that. Benny, now. But what if I do something wrong? No one's gonna notice. Benny, how long have we known each other? About a minute. And in that time, you've only disappointed me once. Really? Yes, I believe in you. <laughs> Let it all out, Benny. It's you against the padlock. <clears throat> well, uh, well, all right then. I can explain. The lamp belongs to me. Oh, I'm happy to talk about it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh? Uh-oh. Domo. I wish I could comply to your request. Really. Ah! Oh. I see why he was plummeting towards his death. The Archmage claims there are hardly any opportunities for the common citizen to improve their lot. The rich stay rich, the poor stay poor. That's nonsense, of course. Have you got that? Nonsense. Yep, got it. He pleads for more education, for the poor as well. What do you say to that? Too complicated. My party and I have found a simpler way. From tomorrow... Anyone can be a winner in life. I present the lottery. And the winners can move from the lower town to the upper town. The winner? Once a month we grant one citizen from the lower town a better life in our midst. And you will report on it, Mr Fox. The winner's new fabulous life and how I made it possible. The winner. It's singular. The first draw is tomorrow. I expect to see it all over the paper. Very well, madam. We're back with Wilbur. Yay! So, yeah, really. S how is this person who is winning their lot in life gonna pay for living in the upper town? Like, are they gonna get any jobs? Cause apparently they don't get education, so that's gonna be hard. So, like, maybe you should, you know, try to help people help themselves. Right, Wilbur. Hello, buddy. We're back. Ooh, Bill the Trader. Do I know you? I think so. Maybe. Hello, Bill. Wilbur. How's business? <laughs> Could be better. I thought business would be booming now that the war's over. It is. But it could be better. <laughs> Pretty sure this is the dude on the first game. Were you in the lower town today? What's the situation like? Those loonies are taking over. What, you mean the protesters? More gold for everyone, they demand. They should work instead, then they'll have gold. But isn't that the problem? They want to work, but there aren't any jobs. There's enough work. I've offered a couple of them work. Yes, but they'd like to be paid. You see, so it is all about gold. You give those layabouts a little finger and they take the whole hand. And who's supposed to pay for it? The honest trader. Well, yes, because you're supposed to give people money if they work. That's the whole point. They get paid 
for doing work. That's the whole point of jobs, okay? I'm pretty sure you ain't a merchant if no one pays for your wares, so... Then you're on the council leader's side, right? You bet. All the traders are. She's one of us after all, even if only by marriage. Her husband, Old Van Buren, was the richest trader in the region. Mm -hmm. Was? Been dead two years. Was the last Van Buren. His father and his uncle before him were full-blooded salesmen. Out of their parents' vast and powerful trading group, they made an even vaster and more powerful trading group. Van Buren knew what to do, and the widow knows too. She knows the hardships the traders suffer, and is sure to cut taxes. Uh huh. Do you even pay taxes? No, but they're too high nonetheless. Uh huh. Yeah, I can see your problem. Looks like your crane's ready. Oh yes, finally I can lower goods straight down to my store. Saves on customs duty and paying bribes to the town guard down by the gate. Is that legal? Not paying bribes? Dunno. But nowadays an honest trader's got to look out for number one. I have to be going, Bill. See you next time. See ya. Pretty sure it ain't bribes you're paying, dude. Judging by the size and the wood used, the barrel must contain a precious liquid. Brandy, I bet. The first few weeks after the war, there wasn't much to be had, but now you can buy practically anything you want, if you have enough gold. Which nobody wants to give you, so if nobody has gold, then how are they supposed to buy things from the merchants who are just hoarding all the gold? It's like, makes no sense. You cannot make any money if no one else makes money that they can buy things from you with, like... Hello? The delivery dock for goods delivered by airship. Bill is one of the town's biggest merchants, and with the war over, more goods land here every day. Staple foods and the like are grown in the villages around the town. The farmers bring them to the market daily. But they can hardly produce enough. Many fields are overgrown, and there's a lack of experienced farmers, good seed, and animals. The goods landing here come from farther away. Things that can't be produced locally. Judging by the size and the foot. No, oh, stop. Bill uses the crane to smuggle things down to the lower town to evade the duty at the gate. Can't imagine that's allowed. Nope, I'm pretty sure it's not. Bill uses the crane to smuggle things. Can't imagine. Pretty sure it's not. It was quite a surprise when one morning suddenly the second tower appeared. The older folk remembered that it had once always been there. Until one day, it just disappeared. They didn't really pay much attention to it at first because the town housed the mage school. Magic stuff happens. But when it didn't return, they just forgot about it. But I wonder how the tower managed to return unnoticed. I mean, if a tower climbs over the town walls and over the town's rooftops to get here, someone's sure to notice. I think it said poof. I really think it said poof. The Archmage no longer lives alone in the tower. He has some family learning the art of magic there too. But it's difficult teaching adults magic. Their minds are less open and they're too stuck in the physical world and they lack the imagination for magic. No, the next generation of real mages will be the young, trained by us in the school. In ten years, the mage tower will be teeming with the school's finest. <laughs> for centuries, the Archmage has also been the leader of the Free Peoples, but Archmage Alistair has had this crazy idea that the people should choose their leader themselves. He says it's not good the mages are the only ones to elect the new leader. That's why we're having the election in three days. But if things go badly, that loathsome Van Buren will become the Alliance's new leader. And people will realize that they voted for the wrong person, or will they? Weather vane. <laughs> a weathercock like that tells the weather with amazing accuracy. When it spins quickly, we have stormy winds coming in from different directions. When it casts a shadow, the sun is shining. When it's wet, it's raining. Or it just has. When it's all white and doesn't rotate, well, it's frozen. Like now. How could a simple piece of metal know all that? Do you, that's clever. 
<clears throat> yep. It knows when it's raining. All on its own. I'm not so convinced that this lottery is a good idea. Sure, it's a fine thing for the winner, but wouldn't it be a coincidence if the right person won? Mm -hmm. Presumably, the names of all the inhabitants of the lower town are written on slips of paper and one of them drawn. I would imagine the council leader herself would draw the winner. She wants to show people that she can bring a better life. Probably. I don't know how... I'm, I'm not that convinced that it's going to be fair, though. Oh! It's Shield Hand! Why do I remember his name? Ugh! Creepy! The prison! I always try to get past this window fast. Uh, uh, hello? Is anyone there? You bet there is. <laughs> Why are you locked up? They want me out of the way. I know too much. But they don't just lock people up for being intelligent. They do, if you know the wrong things. We are being watched. By whom? They are watching us. Uh -huh. Who are they? The wizards? Them. The ones watching us. They're out there. How long have you been in prison? A few days, but I suspect they will never let me out. I'm a political prisoner. They want to silence me. Tell everyone. The truth is out there. Here? In Seastone? Uh, yes. Probably. <laughs> My name is Wilbur Weathervane. Who are you? Wilbur Weathervane? Good alias. Call me Mr. X. My friends call me X. X? Strange name. Still, better than Goalpost Head, I guess. Do you really think you'll be in there long? They certainly won't let me go before the elections. That Van Buren wants to show her strength, and it's anybody's guess what'll happen afterwards. Either way, I'm not going to wait until some court passes judgment on me. I'll escape as soon as I have the chance. Well then, uh, I have to be going. Take care of yourself, brother. Okay. All of the expensive shops in Seastone are here in the upper town. This bakery makes the finest pies the most delicious cakes, and the most amazing chocolates. Luckily, I don't have enough money to buy myself a treat every day. Otherwise, it wouldn't be too long before I no longer fit into my teacher's robe. This is torture. The bakery's closed, but the shop window displays all the things you could enjoy if it were open. <laughs> this is torture. The drain should lead directly to Seastone Sewers. I would like to say that the sewers in this town are a true marvel of engineering skill. But in truth, the stink here in midsummer is absolutely uh, breathtaking. <laughs> Almost every house in the upper town has a drain leading to the sewer. In the lower town, things look different. Many residents just tip their effluence into the street and trust that it will somehow make its way below. Uh huh. The drains block. What? Almost every house in, in the lower. The drain's blocked by a grating, and even if I did remove it, I'd still be too big to climb down. Cool. The coat of arms of the proud town of Seastone, capital of the Alliance and largest town in all Aventasia. With the refugee camp on the outskirts of town, Seastone seems larger than ever before. Seastone was never captured during the war. The town has massive walls and stretches about 200 meters into the air like a tower. That's why they called the Great War the War of the Two Towers. Seastone against the Archwitch Matroga's Dark Tower. Okay. The latest edition of the Seastone Lookout, the local newspaper. 
Council Leader Van Buren. We are equal opportunity providers. Tomorrow morning we will present our solution to the poverty problem. Mm -hmm. We are the only ones with simple and efficient solutions to today's problems. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There are loads of election posters hanging here beside the paper. Death entered the election campaign last week. His slogans are death to all and death is the solution. Hmm. <gasps> death! What's this? Hey! Archmage Alistair's a traitor. He uses the artifact of divine fate for his own purposes rather than to help everyone. And, and here, friends of the Archmage claim he never served in the war and he was not born in Seastone. Those are lies! Why does it matter where he was born? What? <laughs> we met Death in the first game. He's a... Uh, a friend! Who we sort of... Buried. The lookout is reporting unfairly and someone has glued these fabrications about the Archmage to the wall. No wonder his lead in the polls is disappearing. The lookout is rep- No- Hello. Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. No oh, shield hand. Well, I never. If it isn't little Weathervane. Weathervane to you, Mr. Shieldhand. Professor Weathervane, to be precise. Oh, your lordship, forgive me for not kneeling. I see you're still the captain of the town guard. It's captain and its only member. Why aren't there more guards? Surely it's impossible for you to keep the peace all by yourself. The council leader of the merchants doesn't see it that way. She handpicked me for this post. Nothing is more important than loyalty, she said. Uh-huh. How are things in the lower town? Same as here. Just dirtier and everything smaller. What about the refugees? Dunno. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been down there. From up here, it looks like the tent city has stopped growing. Either there are no new refugees arriving or the place is just full. Aren't you responsible for the lower town too? I can hardly be expected to go down there. The place is crawling with criminals. But... Anyway, the anarchists have erected barricades. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't get into the tent city. The town guards are supposed to prevent criminals from running around. You're not doing your job, idiots. Why is the gate closed? I want to go to the lower town. Curfew. After dark, residents of the upper town can only enter the lower town with special permission. Who came up with that? Council leader Van Buren. She's worried about the well-being of the residents of the upper town. I'm sure she is. And where do I get one of these permits? Nowhere today. You can go to the town hall and apply for one there tomorrow. But, but I'm supposed to meet Remy in the inn tonight. Tough. There are posters over there spreading lies about the Archmage. So? Those are lies. Anyone could read them. A couple might even believe them. Nah, what can you do? You, you, you could remove them. I would do it myself, but I don't have any water or a spatula and, and it's your job. Hmm. All right then. Tomorrow. Got way too much to do now. Uh-huh. So, what are you doing? I'm guarding the town. I'm the town guard. Ah. Mm-hmm. Looks like Bill the Merchant's crane is finally finished. It's been two days. He's been transporting things up and down all day. And you inspected the goods? Why should I? Isn't there a toll on transporting goods like alcohol and pipeweed and other stuff from the upper town to the lower town? There are real crimes going on in this town. I don't even have the resources to take care of them. No, I bet that's why Van Buren put only you on this post, because you're a lazy... thing. Bill said something about bribing the town guard. Would you know anything about that? <laughs> that's an outrageous allegation. The town guard is not bribable. Mm -hmm. That's good. Otherwise, you'd probably have too much gold. I mean, if no more goods go through the gate here, then no one needs to be bribed, eh? That's... right. Hmm. So you're saying Bill is cheating the state of its well-earned taxes because uh -huh. he's smuggling goods into the lower town? Do you want to ban him from running the crane? No. Bill and his colleagues are very influential. Anyway, no one said anything about a ban, did they? Hmm. Oh. 
I've got another idea. How can I do it? Mm-hmm. What do you need to do to stop the smuggling? Someone would have to mark one of Bill's barrels of alcohol and then order it from the lower town. If the said marked barrel turns up there tonight without the bribe, uh, tax having been paid, then we have our evidence. You can be really clever, Mr. Shieldhand. The only problem is, I can't leave this place. I have to guard the town, you see. Uh huh. But you, you can fulfill your civic duty and help the town guard. Uh huh. Civic duty? You want me to do your job? Mm -hmm. Not for nothing, of course. What do you want in return? I want a pony. Aha. Uh -huh. So you want free access to the lower town? Ah, no. I want a pony. Yes. You already said that. That's not how it works. You want to go to the lower town. I won't let you. But, coincidentally, there is something you can do for me. So we'll come to an agreement and you get... A pony! <sighs> Fine then. I want into the lower town. <laughs> Excellent. Now you help me convict Bill and I give you the key to the gate. Okay. But now I want the pony. Here's a piece of chalk. Now I want the pony. Dude, now I want the pony. You can't just not give me my pony. Hello? Some famous knight. He's already lost both legs and his sword in battle, but his fighting spirit is unbroken. Tis but a scratch is chiseled into the stone above the statue. Some famous knight. The gate to the lower town is closed. According to Mr. Shieldhand, no one from the upper town is allowed into the lower town after sunset. The gate to the lower town. Accord yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, uh, and with that we're going to take a break and continue in the next episode. Why did I open the inventory? Ooh, we have a chewed writing pad. Oh, we don't have our spells anymore. Aww, paper hat. Awesome. Alright, here we go. So, we're going to take a break and continue in the next episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you later.